Thank you, Daryl. And thanks to Beacon College for <clears throat> having me here. Uh, thanks to all of you for coming. What a beautiful crowd. Uh, it, it just warms my heart to know that people appreciate art. Uh, it just makes my job that much easier. As a matter of fact, I have a buzz phrase that I use. I didn't coin it, so don't, don't quote me as owning it, but uh, your inspiration, your appreciation is my inspiration. Because of you, I do what I do. So thank you very much. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Friends. Romans. Oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm, I'm not there. Friends, Floridians, countrymen, <laughs> lend me your eyes. I come to bring you a new paradigm in art, not the same old BS. So sit back and enjoy, and uh, you'll, you're going to take a journey of about 35 years in about 30 minutes. <laughs> Everett Spruill, um, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama. That's uh, my hometown newspaper there. Um, went back a few years ago and had a big art show, and they wrote that spread about me. Uh, Daryl wrote a couple articles. Didn't you write a couple articles about me since I've been here? Uh, and actually, Daryl, I give Daryl the credit for uh, one of my nicknames, Artful Soul. I adopted that. That was, that was the title of that article. And uh, let's see, where is it? Oh, it's not there. But um, no, I grew up in Birmingham, Alabama. <clears throat> I am a senior citizen, by the way. So I, I, I can identify with all of you here. <laughs> uh, um, um, growing up in Birmingham, we had what was called an industrial education. Uh, they were grooming us as kids to work in factories, foundries, to be craftsmen. Uh, Birmingham was also a steel city. Uh, it was known as Little Pittsburgh. So steel was a major industry, fabricators, you know, all kinds of construction. Uh, my father was a, a, a contractor. Yeah, I was on building sites most of my life as a kid. And my mom was a seamstress. She made clothes for all the women that couldn't find stuff in the store. Uh, <laughs> and so, so I grew up um, building sites, construction sites, sewing, uh, not to mention the musical influence. <clears throat> My mom played piano, as well as she was a photographer as well. So technically, photography was my first love. Uh, before I started painting, I, I, I had a camera in my hand at like five years old. Dad went to the Korean War, came back with duffel bag full of cameras, <laughs> and it was on. Too bad it was the film days, you know, because you, you save a shot. You had 12 exposures, and you got to save them for special photos. But uh, <clears throat> growing up in a creative household, uh, piano lessons, I sang in the choir. You know, we all sang in the church choir. Um, my folks wanted me to <clears throat> actually be a pianist, but I'm not. I'm, I'm not a musician. <laughs> Most people ask that question, are you a musician? No. I live vicariously through, through the paintings as a musician. I do regret, however, not pursuing it. So right now I'm a closet musician. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm teaching myself harmonica and flute. So, um, but don't expect to see me on the stage anytime soon. <clears throat> so um, growing up in a creative household, um, and, and during the 50s and 60s in Birmingham, you can imagine it was a turbulent time. Um, so indoor activities were the norm. Uh, stamp collecting, corn collecting, sports cards, arts and crafts, piano, that sort of thing. Um, I rebelled against most of that. <laughs> My sister right now, she plays three instruments, but she's a stockbroker. <laughs> So, so I, I guess it's, it's really tough to make it in the arts. I mean, there, there are so many. How many artists are here tonight? OK. All right, how many musicians? OK, cool, cool. All right, how many artists and musicians? 
<laughs> oh, we got one. We got one. Well, well you know, you're not so rare, actually. Um, I grew up, <clears throat> of course, with soul music. Um, my sister introduced me to the Beatles. I, I wasn't on that track, but she, she brought the Beatles and what was those guys, those two brothers? I can't think of them. Right. No, no, um, no, no, before them. They, they were, it'll come to me, never mind. Anyway, um, you know, Jimi Hendrix, James Brown, that's, you know, Isaac Hayes, that's the kind of stuff I grew up with. And uh, like I said, I, I'm a closet musician, so, you know, these paintings represent my desire really to be a musician, too. <laughs> so, um, and, and then I've been typecast. Over the years, I've probably painted more jazz than anything, and so now that's what people want to see. They don't care about my still lifes, my portraits, the, the landscapes, the abstract, contemporary stuff. I do a little bit of everything. Um, Tonight I'm just going to focus on the musical pieces. Uh, and if we have enough time, I might show you some of the other pieces as well. So I grew up in Birmingham, <clears throat> went to Berea College. Anybody know about Berea? Yeah. Yeah. Kentucky. Kentucky, right, right. Um, I didn't study art. I'm a self-taught artist. What did you study? I have a business degree. <laughs> And, the, and, there's a, and there's a reason for that. Um, growing, up, growing up in Birmingham, uh, there was a guy called A.G. Gaston. Anybody familiar with A.G.? A.G. Gaston was the first black millionaire in this country. He, he, um, his, 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 his folks were former slaves. He started his own businesses. And ultimately, he, he uh, owned um, a radio station, insurance company, several funeral homes, construction companies. Like I said, this was in the 50s and 60s. Um, <laughs> and the funny thing, my mom worked for AG. This is why this is a, an important story. I grew up as a kid wanting to be like AG. I wanted to own my own business. That was it. Um, so I went to school to study business, to learn what I could do to run it. And um, fast forward, got the degree, um, and managed hotels and restaurants for a few years. And in between those jobs, I sold insurance, securities. I did, was a financial consultant. So I know the numbers. <laughs> I got that number thing down. Uh, while I was in the hotel business, I started collecting art. Now, at the same time, I'm a closet artist. I'm doing watercolors, I'm doing pencil drawings, but never showed them, never tried to sell them. Uh, still taking thousands of photographs, never tried to even monetize those. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm working for Hyatt Hotels. They're moving me all over the country. I, I did about five moves in 10 years. So at the hotel, they always had these art shows, these art auctions uh, and conventions for stamps and coins. So it was, I'm there at work. I mean, that was easy. I mean, I'm on the job buying art and coins and stamps and stuff. So um, fast forward, I, I got tired of the hotel business. Too many hours, not enough money. I wanted to do something I loved, and this was it. Um, art collecting. Um, spent a lot of time researching and, and self-study, uh, not knowing much about art history and the ins and outs of different mediums. Yeah, I, I taught myself and ultimately uh, opened an art gallery. First, the first plan was to sell all of the art that I had accumulated because naturally I hadn't created much of a body of work myself. So <clears throat> I showed other people's art sold their work, sold my collection, and um, that didn't work. <laughs> Galleries uh, are going out of business left and right, and uh, you know, people don't buy art every day. 
So I realized that I'd, ha I'd have to specialize. That's when I started focusing on my own work. Um, um, went on the road, did all of the outdoor art festivals in the southeast. Um, that was like plan G. That didn't work. <laughs> um, then, um, let's see, I opened a gallery, closed the gallery, went on the road. Uh, then um, I, I got calls from Disney and UCF and the Media Institute, and that's kind of what put me on the map. Actually, it was a Disney. I did back-to-back -back Disney designs for Epcot when they had their Black History uh, events in February. Um, did a couple of Pleasure Island Jazz Festival posters uh, back in the day. That's, that Pleasure Island doesn't exist anymore. <clears throat> Uh, two UCF designs. They they had they have a diversity conference every year. Uh, did two of those, and then uh, the Media Institute recently, uh, ironically enough, uh, for their Freedom of Speech conference. Um, so it's it's been a, a nice ride, uh, and like I said, because of you, uh, I'm here now. Thank you very much. All right, where am I? Uh, that photo there, that's, uh, if anyone's familiar with Orlando Arts Magazine, that's the cover. That's one of my pieces that they use for the cover. Uh, that piece uh, I did entirely with magazine cutouts. I think I did that in 97. Uh, speaking of magazine cutouts, anybody heard of Romare Bearden, an artist? Okay, he's a guy that kind of encouraged me. I never met him, but he, he, his work inspired me to, to, do, to follow in his footsteps. After he passed, um, I just thought it would be nice to continue what he started. Okay, uh, let's see, did the survey. Does anybody here own my, any of my art by any chance? Probably not, no? Okay. <laughs> okay. Not yet, right? Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, we got the musicians. Uh, let's see. We talked about AG. Let's see. There was a question earlier. Uh, Norm was interested in. Uh, he 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 remembered the show Good Times. Remember that show Good Times and JJ. J.J. was the painter. He was the artist, right? Yeah. Does anybody know who the real artist was? I know you know. I mean, <laughs> nobody knows. Okay, Ernie Barnes. Have you heard that name? Ernie Barnes was a former NFL player turned artist. Uh, he, he also went on to do several designs for several Olympic games, so I'm sure you've seen his work. He was sort of like the Leroy Neiman at that time. He was on the spot doing paintings, that sort of stuff. But yeah, uh, Ernie Barnes, right. <laughs> That's that piece that Daryl was talking about, that Ray Charles piece in Johnson's Diner. That's the article, actually. More Orlando Sentinel Press. Those guys were good to me. That bottom piece, that African mask, that's one of the designs I did for Disney. I did that entirely with spray paint and hand, hand cut stencils. Little graffiti techniques there. You'll see, you'll see some of those pieces a little larger later. Satisfied customer. Nice smile. That was Jimi Hendrix. Yeah, we got a larger version of him coming up. <clears throat> Did anybody know that Jimi Hendrix was an artist? Ah, well kept secret. Actually, I got to see some of his work a couple of months ago during the World Peace Festival in Orlando Film Festival. They actually had a whole show of Jimi Hendrix's art. Nobody knew. 
Nobody knew. You can search right now online and, and you might find one image of his, of, of his art. Uh, it seems that he carried a sketchbook with him wherever he went on tour. And he did these felt tip pen marker type really, you're going to see a few of them later. I, I, I wanted to take closer photos of them, but I'm a little leery of people taking pictures of my art, so I, I didn't really do a, a good job of capturing his work, but we'll see a little bit of it later. But yeah, he uh, painted these really abstract, um, they look like fractals. They, they're really abstract, very colorful, very, um, that, like that flower power kind of look. You know, that <laughs> from the 60s, that peace and love, psychedelic stuff. Well, it was definitely psychedelic, no doubt about that. I mean, it, it was definitely Jimi Hendrix's work. This is early work, early stuff. You can see the Picasso influence. Uh, Picasso, Bearden, uh, both those artists, Brock, uh, Jacob Lawrence, uh, their, their influence is... Um, is, is readily seen. Uh, of course, we're talking about jazz, blues, rock, and soul, but all of that translates now into hip hop. Um, Miles Davis was one of the first musicians, I believe, before he died to infuse hip hop and jazz. His last album, Doobop, I don't know if any of you are familiar with it, Dubop. Okay, we got one. Um, well, yeah, I, he, he used Cool Mo D, Easy Mo B. He had a bunch of guys on there. And, you know, if, if you didn't hear the rappers, you would just be tapping your toe to another jazz tune, but it, it worked out perfectly, perfectly. <clears throat> and that's a watercolor. This is early stuff. I actually designed that for an interior decorator. That's not my normal color palette, as you can see. She wanted those muted shades. That was 30 years ago, though. I mean, and, and as you know, colors and decorating ideas change over time. So uh, this was what they were decorating with 30 years ago. <laughs> it was a pair. Everything starts with a drawing, all of my artwork except for the contemporary stuff. Um, every painting, I, I'm sort of a draftsman more than an artist. Um, every painting starts in the sketchbook. I, I, like I said, I'm self-taught, so my drawing skills aren't the best. I didn't spend hours and hours paying an instructor to teach me how to draw, so. <laughs> but, I mean, I get there. It takes me maybe, three, four, drawing a design three or four times and then I get it right. You know, it gets better and better and better. And that's what I tell most artists, you know, by the time you get to the thousandth painting, you're going to be good. So just, <laughs> just, just concentrate on getting there, getting there. But uh, everything starts with a drawing. Um, every drawing does not become a painting. This is my friend um, Al Poliak. Uh, he's down in Boca. Anybody been to the, the um, Funky Biscuit in Boca Raton? Nope, nope. It's a jazz club. They got my stuff down there. He plays the B, B3 Hammond organ. He's pretty good. Um, I have seven pieces in the Amway collection. I was a part of that new building. Um, that's one of the pieces. They requested jazz, actually. They asked for jazz in musical stuff. Chitlin Circuit, anybody familiar with the Chitlin Circuit? All right, all right, all right, all right. Well, we gotta tell these other people what the Chitlin Circuit. <laughs> do do y'all know what Chitlins are? <laughs> huh? Oh, you're laughing. <laughs> you know what they are, okay. <laughs> Okay, who doesn't know what chitlins are? Okay, all right, just a handful, okay. Well, chitlins are, are, are pig intestines. <laughs> and actually, it's a delicacy in the African-American community. I mean, it's like, uh, it's like the best thing since. I mean, I don't, I don't like them myself. 
I don't like them. I mean, as a matter of fact, when my mom cooked them, I would leave, go stay with my cousins for the weekend. I mean, <laughs> seriously, no. I mean, they, they were that... I can't say the word I'm, I want to say. Um, anyway, well, the Chitlin Circuit um, was a... So, so like the, the Green Book. You familiar with that movie, The Green Book? Okay, all right. Well, well the Ch Chitlin Circuit was sort of like a Green Book without the book. These were places that you could go, that black people could go, without being discriminated against. Specifically hotels, restaurants, that sort of thing. And the musicians at that time had an even harder time. They're on the road all the time. And that's why B.B. King uh, had his health issues, because they didn't eat right. And um, they just had to deal with some unusual conditions. But the Chilling Circuit was that, you know, sort of like that underground railroad of, 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 of tour people. You, you know where to go, where you can stay. Um, and actually, um, <clears throat> one of the spots on the circuit is in Orlando. Uh, the Wells Built Hotel, the Wells Built Museum. Anybody familiar with the Wells Built? Well, Dr. Wells was one of the first black doctors in Orlando. He built a hotel, and he had a casino. <laughs> yeah, that's a misnomer. It really wasn't a casino. I don't know why they call it a casino, because it was a community center. It was really a, just a community, just like this. It was a community center, but they had casino on the front of the building. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, so B.B. King, James Brown, all those musicians that came to town, they had to stay at the Wells Building. And it's still there today. The history is still there. The casino's not there, unfortunately. It burned. But uh, the hotel is still there, and it's a museum now. That's another piece there. Actually, that piece has been revisited a couple of times. Do you notice that right there? I tend to do that. I like certain pieces, and... Actually, I don't like them. Maybe that's what it is. I want to improve it. That's really what it is. I, I didn't. These were quickies. The Amway Center. They came to me and said, "Oh, we need uh, seven paintings in a month." <laughs> okay. All right. These will be quickies. They lowballed me anyway on the prices. So, <laughs> so, so they got what they deserved. <laughs> That's one of the pieces there. That's one of the pieces you can actually see without going into the, into the arena. It's in the lobby area. Those are historical buildings around Orlando. That's one of the pieces. They like that piece so much they put it on a bus. <laughs> it's riding around Orlando. My name all over it. Pretty cool, though. That was cool. <clears throat> That's a better shot of it right there. Donna Dallas, she's the art czar of Orlando. And uh, that guy, he's like a Disney VP. Anybody know him? I can't think of his name right now, but he's like the G GM or something. There's that bus again, that piece again. Um, <clears throat> jazz has its roots, of course, in African music. Um, born in New Orleans, out of gospel, blues, that sort of thing. So Africa is special to me. Um, I do a whole series of African-inspired art, masks, sculptures, instruments, dancers, the whole nine, yeah, all of it, symbols, everything. I mean, anything African I can find, I'm going to try to incorporate it, even the stamps. I even incorporate the African stamps into my art. I mean, being a stamp collector, right? So I got all these stamps that are basically worthless. <laughs> basically, I mean, 100 years from now, they might be worth something. But right now, they're just all over the place, you know. 
Um, and, but, but now I specifically buy certain genres of stamps. Uh, in the U.S., they've got this funny rule about what, who, what they will put on a stamp. If you if you have to be dead for ten years to be put on an, a U.S. stamp, right? But uh, right now, you can buy Obama stamps in every other country on the planet. <laughs> every other country, everyone has got a bunch of Obama. Oh, don't even mention Elvis. I mean, but he's been gone. But 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 they actually have President. Um, What's his name on a stamp? <laughs> oh, Trump. That's what I was trying to think. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Some people like him, I get. Anyway, uh, the African influence in jazz is, is definitely um, uh, well documented. Uh, the drumming, you know, in New Orleans, the rhythm sections, you know. Um, even the, the, the funeral processions that they, when they have the drummers and the musicians, that, that's an African tradition. You see the kalimba in this piece. Earth, wind, and fire? Yes. All right, all right. Well, you've heard the kalimba. You may not have seen it, but you've heard it. I can't imagine what it sounds like. It, Sounds like somebody hitting on tin cans or something, but it, it's a really unique sound. <clears throat> and then the shekare, the gourd with the beads around it. Um, those are still used. I mean, Earth, Wind, and Fire, they use the kalimba right now. And the shekare, just about every jazz band has one. I mean, if it's not a shekare, it's the it's a, a cast, the, what is it? The, the maracas, maracas, right, maracas, right. <clears throat> And then there was the blues. Mixed media. Um, like Daryl said, I use a lot of different mm, materials. Um, recycle materials. Everything from electronic parts to recycle to wallpaper, actually. Uh, designer wallpaper all sorts of fabric. Sheet music is a staple. I love sheet music. It, 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 you, there's a little bit in there in this piece. You can't see it very well though. But um, I, I, I love incorporating what I call interactive elements. Elements that talk to you, right? Uh, in, a, in, a, in a different way, in a visual language. Um, a uh, call and response, uh, improvisation. Uh, well, call and response, the slaves, when they were in the fields singing, uh, you know, they, they, they'd have a lead singer and the other people would chime in with the chorus or whatever. Um, that's sort of the same principles I'm using, even, especially improvisation. Uh, most of the time, I don't know how a painting's gonna turn out. I just have a drawing. And I really do feel my way through the painting, I, step by step. Now, I'm working on four or five pieces at one time, but I don't know what to do with certain parts of the, of the piece. So I'll, I'll take a break, work on something else, and then it'll hit me. Okay, use this, use that, right? So we've got magazine pages here. We've got fabric. That's a... That's a you may recognize that. That's a gold bar. That's a photograph of a gold bar, a gold ingot. Uh, there's a map. Uh, <coughs> dig that band. There's a piece of a map right there. A lot of it you can't see it until you get really close. Now the interactive elements that I'm talking about uh, is something like this paper here. You see how it reflects? That's actually gift wrapping paper. <laughs> That's that foil gift wrap paper. I had to learn the hard way. It doesn't glue down until you take the paper off the back of it. <laughs> <laughs> How come you have two men standing and two slamming? Um, good question. I don't know. Um, like I said, they, they, they have each come out differently. They change. Um, and... Uh, 
I, I don't really try to direct it. I just kind of let it happen most of the time. Uh, like I said, it, I, I can improve on it, but I'll do that on the next one. It's music. It's terrific. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's uh, Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, Charlie Mingus, Thelonious Monk, and Max Roach. Those are those are some of the traditional traditional musicians, um, and 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 I am a traditional jazz lover. I'm not really into smooth jazz. I'm sorry. I, it's, it's too much like elevator music. It all sounds the same, uh, right? So I'm a purist in that sense. Uh, and I'm sure Wynton would say the same thing. I mean, he's, he's actually a jazz snob. <laughs> that guy, I tell you, he, he doesn't take any stuff when it comes to jazz. Let's see. <clears throat> That's, um, I try to show people how my art looks in their home. So I'll, I'll superimpose images on the wall just to give you an idea of what it looks like. Um, and for the most part, all of my work is available in various sizes. Small, medium, large, canvas, paper. I can print on aluminum, sheets of aluminum. And this is actually a shower curtain. That's actually a fabric shower curtain. You need a liner for it, of course. That's Nina. That's Nina. All of my work is available. I can put it on a bedspread. Well, they call them. <laughs> Y'all you, you, call them. Y'all call them duvet covers. So today's uh, commercial applications for art are endless. I mean, just whatever you can imagine it can be done uh, with art and, you know, and the new printing techniques and the new, new printers that they have. That's the Winton there. It's actually bigger than that piece. That's a 60 inch, that shows you a 60 inch uh, canvas, a copy, of course. Um, that Winton is mostly recycled wallpaper. That piece is recycled wallpaper, a little paint on its face, but everything else is wallpaper, designer wallpaper. Um, I like my work to be archival. I, I want it to last forever, right? So when I first started doing the magazine cutouts, you know, I thought I was onto something until about five years later, they all started fading rapidly. I mean, they were like disappearing. Uh, magazine pages are printed with cheap ink. Uh, it's not meant to last. They're not fade resistant. Even if you glass, put glass over it or varnish it, it's going to fade. Um, there's no way to prevent it. Fortunately, my digital files don't fade. <laughs> so so, so there's, there's an upside to that. The originals are fading, but I can make archival prints on canvas, paper, that'll last for at least a hundred years. But I don't use magazine pages anymore. Uh, hence the designer wallpaper. It's scrubbable, it's fade resistant. I mean, it's like, yeah, you could wash it off with, you know. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, um, a lot of people ask me, and nobody's mentioned it yet, but I don't use oil paint. Here, what, why, what, hmm? no? Um, why not? Well, number one, people don't know it takes a year for an oil painting to cure, to dry, a whole year. And you can't varnish it un until it's dry. So I can see why there were a lot of starving artists back in the day, you know. <laughs> Because uh, this painting right here I finished last week, it would still be wet. <laughs> Seriously, it would still be wet. And then you can't varnish it for a year. So, you know, they got to sit, you can't sell them. So, yeah, you know, first in, first out, you know, but you, they're year old paintings, you know, two year old paintings. I have to be able to sell mine quickly. Um, 
I just did a painting <clears throat> for a jazz festival that's coming up next year. And when she came to me, she said, Everett, I wanna, want you to do your, want some of your artwork. And I said, well, well when do you need it? Next week. <laughs> so I did another quickie in a week. Um, but um, you know, it normally doesn't work that way. I, I take my time. Uh, most commissions take about 30 days just to give me a little time to make sure it's right before I, you know, uh, put it up for adoption. But, uh, <clears throat> so I use acrylic. Acrylic is, um, is the high-tech paint of today. Uh, oil paint is old tech. Um, a year to dry, and you go into any major museum now, and the paintings, they're all cracking. Every single one of them is cracking. Oil becomes brittle. Now, this is all they had. I mean, they didn't have anything else. They didn't have acrylic. They didn't have enamel, tempera, uh, any, of that, any of the latex base paints that are flexible and fade resistant. The flexibility is the key. Because once you put that oil down and it gets hard, if it's on a canvas that's moving, it's going to crack. If it's on wood, it, it has a chance. But if it's on canvas, it's going to crack. Acrylic will never crack. I can take a damp cloth. And, and, and people like to touch anyway. That's why you can't touch an oil painting. Because your fingers will actually, it'll, you know, you can damage the art. You can't damage acrylic. It's like your car. It's basically almost like your car, paint on your car. But it's flexible. So it'll last a lot longer, it won't fade. Like I said, you can take a damp cloth and just wipe that off. You don't have to pay an art curator a lot of money to clean your oil paintings, because that's what has to be done. You can't just wipe them off. Oh, they collect dust, too. Did I mention that? <laughs> it doesn't just collect it, it sticks to it. All right, um, I, I, one of my goals when I first started doing jazz was to try to document as much as I could the, the, the legends of jazz. Uh, you know, and then I had this list. Uh, I wanted to do the top 100 jazz musicians. That didn't work. There, there are too many of them. And then before the night's over, somebody's going to tell me about another musician that I haven't heard of. And once I hear his art, I'm going to have to do a painting. And that's kind of how it works. I mean. When I listen to that music and I get goosebumps, I have to do the painting. I have to. I mean, that's kind of my, my judge for who I paint. Uh, unless uh, um, they, you want it customized. I do customized art. The, the painting you see on the screen now is customized. Uh, the guy on the trunk in the center uh, Early Thornton. Anybody heard of Early? Anybody heard of Early? Early was an Orlando musician. He, uh, his day job was as an IT tech for a major tech company. Um, this was his local band in Orlando. This was the, 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 I did this for their first album cover. So this is on the cover of their album. Uh, they didn't last long. Uh, Early, however, went on to be internationally acclaimed. He's touring Europe right now with some very, very major, major musicians. So I'm really proud to have known Early before he became famous. The notorious <clears throat> Mr. Biggie Smalls, Christopher Wallace, hip-hop legend that's uh, spray paint and magazine pages. I think that original is over there. Yeah. Oh, it is over there. You can, you can see how it's faded, too, the magazine pages. There she is, Lady Day. Wallpaper, 
tissue, a little spray paint, acrylic. Oh, there's a, um, there's a flip phone on there, the microphone. You see the gold parts? That, that's a disassembled flip phone glued to the canvas. <laughs> it's painted gold. I painted over it. But on the original, I mean, it's pretty obvious. The um, sheet music in her hair, the flower, that's uh, Ain't Misbehaving. <laughs> These are all local musicians. <clears throat> if you've been to Disney, you've seen Don Black. Um, anybody from me been to the Blue Bamboo Center for the Arts? No, you haven't. You would have seen my work if you had. <laughs> okay. I, I curate the Blue Bamboo. It's in Winter Park, Florida. It's a new live jazz room. Uh, all live. Uh, all local and internationally known artists uh, come through there. And, and it's nightly. It's, it's every night. Except Monday and Tuesday, I think, uh, they take off. But uh, every local musician you can imagine or that you know eventually goes through the Blue Bamboo. It's relatively new. It's about two years old. But um, <clears throat> the uh, keyboard player, Billy Hall, passed away. This is actually a tribute to him. That's why it's called Billy's World. Um, you can see the sheet music on the keyboard. Um, there's some more of that reflective material on the drums. Uh, Monique Spivy, Mark Claremont, they're, they're all locals. As a matter of fact, Monique lives in Mount Dora. Mark, um, he plays at the Blue Bamboo all the time. Um, he sits in with just about all the musicians that play there. This piece is called Birth of Cool, Birth of the Cool, and that's none other than Miles Davis. Percy Heath on bass, and the blacked out face guy, that's Jerry Mulligan. <laughs> that was Jerry Mulligan standing in the corner. I mean, I don't know, I just like to throw people curves. I mean, I, you know, I'm trying to change this art game and shake it up a little bit. So I do things a little differently. <clears throat> that's one of those magazine cutout collages that I did in the 90s. Some of you can't see that. This from back there, but this is, this is it. This is a copy right here. But um, <clears throat> that's the front end of a car right there. That's an automobile. You see that right there? Um, that's a coat. That's a men's overcoat, the sleeve there. <laughs> Uh, you can see the computer board. That's Photoshop, that computer board. Here, take that, pass it around. Here. Pass it around there. So those are magazine cutouts. And like I said, they, 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 um, they do better in print form. That's a mattress right there. That's a mattress. You know, the closer you get, the more you can see it. Here, Pat, here, take a look at it. <laughs> Blues Boy. That's one of those early um, magazine cutout collages. Anybody know who Blues Boy is? What Blues Boy represents? No? BB? Blues Boy? <laughs> yeah, I mean, B.B. King. That's B.B. Who, did somebody say who is B.B. King? <laughs> did somebody say that? <laughs> okay. Man, the thrill is gone. <laughs> All right, one of my most favorite musicians, Carlos Santana. Yeah, black magic woman. Yeah. Remind me of my college days. Magazine pages and spray paint. Background is spray painted. And that's all magazine cutouts. There's that reflective 
material again. It, it doesn't come through on the prints, on the copies. And up and coming, well, he's made it. Christian Scott, he's like, he's the shizzle. He went the route of uh, Dizzy Gillespie, had his horns custom made. Although Dizzy, uh, uh, somebody sat on his horn the first time it was bent. And he's liked it so much, he had to make that way. <laughs> so, you know, there are happy accidents, I tell you. I mean... Now, that, um, that's a collage done with Hubble Space Telescope photographs. <laughs> Those are all Hubble shots. Every, every bit of it. Right under the horn, you can see the telescope, actually. There's a part of it showing there. But that's our stars, our universe, our galaxies. My daughter was the model for this piece. She sings in the church choir, of course. Uh, that is all designer wallpaper. I revisited that piece, too. I've done it like three times. There it is. Spray paint and paper. What do you change when you revisit? I might do it in a different medium and then improve it. Like I said, I, I mean, I can always make it better. I, I always feel that way. I mean, even when I finish a piece, I'm, if, it's, if I look at it too much, I'm going to put some more paint on it or something. <laughs> That's a Marsalis right there. One of the brothers. And who said trombone? Somebody asked about trombone. There you go. <laughs> Forgot about him. That's a Sharpie. They said Sharpie on vinyl. That's, that's a Sharpie drawing on vinyl wall covering, actually. It's vinyl wall covering. There we go. Everybody knows this guy, right? Dizzy Gillespie. There's a horn. Hughes Cheeks. He's a man. One of my favorites. That was a commission a long time ago. Spray paint on wood with paper. But mostly spray paint, hand cut stencils. There he is, Sir Duke. That's um, wall covering. That's wallpaper. Ella. Ella Fitzgerald. Wallpaper. <laughs> a little paint. That wallpaper went a long way. <laughs> Well, I mean, they throw it out every year. You know, they throw it away. Every year, they throw away last year's samples. So, free materials. Love it, love it. There's another collage from Hubble Shots. Uh, Esperanza Spalding, anyone? All right. Well, you're a musician. Yeah, you're keeping up. Esperanza Spalding is the new avant-garde, neo-soul, jazz. She does a little bit of everything. You know, but she plays that bass. She's really good. She's really good. You should look her up. Fathead Newman, y'all know him? No? Fathead played with James Brown. And, uh, what was it, Maceo. Him and Maceo was buddies. You hear James talking about Maceo all the time. Well, Maceo Parker was actually, you know, he is he still alive? 
Yeah, okay, okay, he's still alive. But Fathead is dead. Fathead. Oh, that shouldn't rhyme, but. Uh, <laughs> that's a collage on wood. <clears throat> that's all kinds of paper and spray paint and sheet music and uh, I, that, that one. That one, I need to do it over. Four musicians, a la Picasso's three musicians. Sharpie on vinyl. I try to draw something every day. I try to paint every day. I mean, when you got unfinished works looking at you, you know, it, it, it's kind of hard to <laughs> just let them sit. Um, this is one of my first drawings, felt tip marker, designs before I turned pro. Um, the, these were the closet pieces. Nobody saw these ever. And they were small. They were like little pieces, you know, maybe like five by seven, eight by ten max. So, you know, you couldn't really do it. And this was before digital too. I mean, back in the day when we had to use film, film. You remember? Oh, of course y'all remember film. Anyway, um, it was a lot harder to capture your work back in the day. Um, you either had to take it to a professional who had a Hasselblad, you know, them $50,000 cameras, uh, or uh, somebody with a flatbed scanner, which was really ahead of its time back then. Uh, so. It was hard to capture the image, and you know, once it's sold, you know, you, you can't get a, you can't, you know, reshoot it or whatever. So a lot of those images, I don't have a good example, a good file for them. Uh, it, it, but now everything is easy to capture, to scan, it's affordable, uh, and and like I said, you, the merchandise options are limitless. I've even put art on a car. They even put a wrap. They wrapped a car with some of my art. <laughs> well, like they did the bus, actually. Um, <clears throat> a few years back, well, that was 2010. My, one of my pieces was used. I licensed them. You know, you can license them. Single use. Put it on your merchandise or your Jazz Fest poster or wherever you want to use it for. Uh, this was a jazz festival, art festival at the Pelastic Museum in Winter Park. Familiar with the Pelastic Sculpture Museum? It's a pretty nice spot, well kept secret, real small museum. Most, you know, most of the exhibits are outdoors. But um, I'll paint on just about anything. I found this room divider on the side of the road. You know those Japanese room dividers with the parchment in the middle and that sort of stuff? Well, somebody threw it away. I picked it up and painted on it. Actually, I covered it with canvas first and then painted on it. So that's side A, side B of a six feet tall room divider. Came out really good. I bought a seven foot tall divider. I'm going to work on that one. Wallpaper, fabric, what else is on there? Some metal parts where the, where the strings are. Well, the strings, actually I found uh, some paper that uh, fit perfectly. Yeah, you know, it, it's crazy how that worked out. And those are just metal gears up on the top. They're actual gears. When I was doing those Disney designs for Pleasure Island, this is one of those spray painted stencils. <clears throat> uh, I, I think I did probably five designs, you know, give them a choice of what to choose from for the poster. And this was one of the rejects. The Modern Jazz Quartet, anybody familiar? Yeah. All right, MJQ. They were one of the premier jazz bands. Um, Traditional jazz, 
old school jazz. I've revisited this painting a couple of times. Let me see if the next one, yeah, there it is from backstage. The same painting. Well, the same group. It's a different design, but you know, it's, it's more or less from backstage. The art of Jimi Hendrix. That's Jimi Hendrix's art. And they were relatively affordable for prints. Um, uh, the, they weren't originals. They were reproductions of his work. They were selling in those frames for about $1,500, which I thought was still a good deal considering how rare they are. Uh, they were printed by his estate, so it's an authorized release, uh, and they're beautiful. They, they look really good in person. The colors are vibrant, uh, very sharp, uh, and nicely framed, too, I must say. But, yeah, you can see he was tripping. <laughs> oh, I was tripping. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what killed him, huh? <laughs> so, um, you know, Art Basel, all of the major galleries are there with their artists being represented. And uh, it's really just a, a big party, really. I, I'm not sure how much art is really being sold, but, you know, everybody brings their yachts and, and stuff and pull them up in the grove. and. And, you know, they have art shows on the boats. So it's, it's a pretty big deal. <clears throat> but like I said, it's a great time to be an art collector, uh, especially art by African Americans, people of color. Uh, the work has been so undervalued over the years that you can still get a good buy. Uh, it, it's still considerably undervalued unless you're looking at somebody that's deceased uh, and I'm, I, I don't know if any of you uh, saw the news about the Basquiat painting. If you're familiar with John Michel Basquiat, a graffiti artist turned fine artist. Uh, Andy Warhol's buddy. You may have seen the movie. Uh, well, Basquiat <clears throat> was a graffiti artist, like I said, turned fine artist. One of his paintings recently sold for $110 million. <laughs> Well, wait a minute, I was around $110.5 million. <laughs> um, unfortunately, his, his estate didn't get any of that. No. Um, it, it only happens in Europe. They only have a resale uh, uh, clause like that in Europe. In the U.S., you don't get any sale after you've sold it the first time. Uh, but in Europe, they, you know, if it, if it sells and, you get, and it sells for more, you, you get a percentage of that. They're trying to change that here, but obviously, um, you know, people that want to take advantage of the artwork don't want that to happen. You know, uh, they don't want to give up any of that. You know, but imagine Sotheby's giving up part of their money to somebody they don't even know. But... <clears throat> But uh, like I said, the, the, the market is, is trending. It, it's um, the Obama portraits put a lot of black artists on the map. Um, and the same artist that did the Obama portrait, um, his paintings are going for about a half a mil a piece right now. Half a mil. Uh, of course, he's got to pay for that, that Princeton education. So. <laughs> But uh, his name is um, Kehinde Wiley. Uh, oh, he made the news too. Did you see about the, uh, you see this, the bronze sculpture that they put in Times Square just recently? That's Kehinde Wiley. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Kehinde Wiley um, um, create, recreated a, a, a bronze sculpture uh, not unlike the, the Confederate sculptures that are in Virginia on the mall. Same size, everything, except it's a black guy on a horse <laughs> with dreadlocks, torn jeans, 
<laughs> I mean, it, it, it's, it's great. So, so, so it's, it's in, I, I think it's still in Times Square, and they're going to move it to Virginia and sit it side by side to those Confederate statues. All right, so, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's I mean, well, and, and his philosophy is, hey, you know, leave the statues, we'll just make our own. <laughs> we'll just put them right next to them, which is great. I love this guy. <clears throat> All right, we're going to wrap it up, and I think we've made a full circle anyway. Uh, nope. Local musicians. Um, the Steinway Society of Orlando, they raise money for uh, underprivileged kids to give them a piano and teach them piano lessons. They have a fundraiser every year uh, where they invite artists to actually paint on a piano and then they auction it off. This is a piano before, that's after. That's after. <clears throat> Spray painted stencils, uh, my stamps are on it. I, I pulled out all of my conservation stamps from all over the world and glued them to the front of that piano. There's a jazz band underneath. There's a jazz band on the stool. There's butterflies all over it. One side, tribal rhythms, my African heritage and African stuff. That's actual fabric and stuff on there. That's the bench, jazz band. There's a top view. The top has actually uh, features all of the zodiac signs are on the top of the piano. You can see the stamps there. Those are stamps from all over the world. All right, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. <laughs>